What's going on, y'all? Welcome to the Score Fantasy Basketball Podcast. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Wave Wire Queen. Today's episode, we are going to rank our top 10 players. Make sure you check out our previous rankings from 20 to 16 and 16 to 11. You can check those two episodes out. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. We have a lot of great content, which will help you prepare for your upcoming fantasy basketball season. Now let's talk about our top 10 rankings. Coming in at number 10, we have Trey Young, guard with the Atlanta Hawks. I have him ranked at 10 instead of my top five, simply because DeJounte Murray was traded to the Hawks. So Trey is not going to have to carry the full load because DeJounte Murray is very capable of scoring the ball, rebounding, getting assists as well. So I do expect Trey scoring to come down slightly and his assists. He still had a tremendous season last year, and I expect him to still play very well. He may play a little more off the ball where DeJounte is actually getting him set up. Maybe some extra screens, freeing him up for some corner threes. We'll have to see what the Hawks are going to do. But again, he had a, a, a very good season last year. He played 76 games, averaged 28.4 points per game. He shot over 46% from the field, over 38% from threes. So that is good. His field goal percentage is moving in the right direction. He shot over 90% from the free throw line, averaged 3.7, 3.8 rebounds per game, 9.7 assists, four turnovers. I would love to see those turnovers come down a bit. Again, I do feel like the assists may come down slightly because again, DeJounte Murray is in the building. So he may end up, setting Trey up for some um, scoring opportunities. Coming in at number nine, Carl Anthony Towns, forward slash center with the Timberwolves. I had Carl Anthony Towns in my top five, but with the trade of Rudy Gobert, I had to kind of move him back a little bit because I do believe that's going to impact his stats, mainly rebounds and he's going to clog up the paint a little bit. So Car Anthony Towns may spend more time behind the arc, which is good because he can shoot three, but that's going to take away from those rebounds. So I, I moved him to, to nine. Obviously, this past season was a career year for Carl Anthony Towns. I expect him to be good this year, just not as good as, as last year. He played 74 games. He averaged 24.6 points per game, shot over 52, almost 53% from the field, shot 41.3% from threes, which is very, very good. He shot 82% from the free throw line, averaged 9.8 rebounds, 3.6 assists, 3.1 turnovers, one block and one steal. So he really um, helped your team out statistically in multiple categories. I do expect him to score the ball. I expect him to still be very good from the three-point line, but I do anticipate those, um, not stills. I do anticipate his rebounds will come down slightly. So keep that in mind when you're drafting him, but you can't go wrong if you were to draft him in the top 10 or even the top eight, because he's going to still be good and he's going to, rebound the ball, just maybe uh, slightly less as um, he did the previous season, but he will overall still have a good year and impact your team in a positive manner fantasy-wise. Coming in at number eight, we have Kevin Durant with the Nets. Now, KD, it's hard to kind of rank him these past few years because he's unable to stay healthy, and I do evaluate health as part of of my rankings, but when you have KD, your opponents will always have a problem. As long as he can remain healthy, he's going to finish in the top 10 statistically. So he's at number eight. Early on, I had him outside of my top 10, but I moved him back in there because I do believe this is going to be it. This is going to be the season where he's going to be healthy. They're going to try to make that deep run. He's going to be on point all season long, which is why he's in my top 10. He hasn't played much the last few seasons, okay? So 55 games last year, he averaged 29.9 points per game, shot over 51% from the field, which is great. But 
you didn't have that for the majority of the season, which will, will hurt you. And hence it hurt his, uh, rankings here. He shot 91% from the free throw line. Um, again, 38.3% from threes, which is very good. 7.4 rebounds, 6.4 assists, 3.5 turnovers. You're going to get a little bit of everything. You're going to get scoring and it's going to be efficient and you're going to get rebounding from KD and you're going to get you're going to get much of that this season. It's just for how long. We're hoping that he can at least play 70 games. Just give us 70, KD. That's all we asking for. Coming in at number seven, we have James Harden, guard with the 76ers. I'll tell you this. He is a triple-double threat. Triple-double threat, but he's going to turn the ball over a whole lot. So you have to keep that in mind. But again, James Harden, he's going to score, rebound, and assist. That is what you're getting with him. Just be mindful. The turnovers are going to be in the um, four, maybe five range. And, and that can hurt your team slightly. But what he's doing statistically with the other categories like scoring, rebounding, and assisting, it's going to... To, to offset that, those um, turnovers. So in 2021, he played 65 games. He averaged 22 points, shot 41% from the field. If it, in the categories, basically, that's going to hurt you. And he shot 33% from three. So if he's going to shoot like that this season, those categories will slightly um, be down for you in a categories based league if you decide to go with James Harden. But again, he makes up for that. He shoots a high percentage from the free throw line, shooting over 87%, 7.7 rebounds, and 10.3 assists per game, which is great. But he averaged 4.4 turnovers. And remember, I said his turnovers, turnovers will be between four and five, which is a lot. But again, he's doing other things for you on the court. Um, and he averaged 1.3 steals per game again with with um, James Harden he's going to be inefficient from the field because again he's not going to shoot a high percentage from the field however he's still going to score the ball he's going to get to the free throw line and then he's going to give you rebounds and assists and some nights he will eclipse the triple double mark and that's an uh, uh, some, an extra incentive in most leagues for you in fantasy. So if James Harden is your guide and go on and draft James Harden coming in at number six, we have LeBron James. He will always be in my top 10 as long as he is in the NBA, because guess what? He is always productive. It's just how many games can we get out of LeBron now? That's crazy because you know, LeBron, you know, over the years has been excellent rarely miss time. And then the last few seasons, he's starting to miss more games. Hopefully we can get 65 to 70 out of him this year. But when you're drafting LeBron, you're getting an efficient scorer, rebounder. It's going to get you assists. It's going to do a little bit of everything. No, a lot of everything. Okay. He's going to do it all and he's going to be efficient. Okay. 2021, he played 56 games, averaged 30.3 points per game, shot over 52% from the field, 35% from threes, which is very good for, for LeBron James. He shot 75.6% from the free throw line, which isn't bad, but I want to see him get up to 80. Can he get it up to 80? Mm, I don't know, but hey. 75 is, I'll take that with LeBron. He averaged 8.2 rebounds, 6.2 assists. 3.5 turnovers, 1.3 steals, and 1.1 blocks. So with LeBron, you're going to get a, 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 a lot of everything. It is going, he's going to be efficient, which is a plus. And again, as long as LeBron is in the NBA playing at a high level, he will always be in my top 10 because he's going to produce like a top 10 player. Don't be that that guy and allow your league mate to Take LeBron in the second round and pair him up with somebody like a, a Carl Anthony Towns or Joel Embiid or Jason Tatum because then you'll have a whole lot of problems. Coming in at number five, this is the top five, y'all. Coming in at number five, we have Joel Embiid center with the 76ers. He is simply amazing. He has been healthy the last two years. He's been playing and the whole foot. In the back of your mind of, oh, 
I got I'm gonna draft Embiid and he's not going to be available. It's fading. It's fading. He had a very good season. He's just been tremendous. I mean, he's a skilled big. He's one of the best bigs in the NBA. He can shoot and he can hit those threes too, okay, and rebound and play defense and get you blocked. So with Embiid, he's going to score the ball. He's going to be efficient doing it. He's going to play defense. So that means he's going to get you some more rebounds on the defensive side. He's going to get some steals and he's going to block shots and be efficient. And then again, like I said, three. So what did he do in 2021? He played 68 games, which is good for me when it comes to, to MB. He averaged um, 30.6 points per game, which is very good. Shot 49.9% from the field. Shot 37% from threes, which is very good for a center, okay? Very good. Shot 81.4 from the free throw line, which is very good. Again, he is efficient scoring-wise, whether that is the three, the free throws, or if he's trying to hit a regular um, field goal, he is efficient, and that is a plus in fantasy football. And then, again, he's he's playing defense and doing things on the de defensive side of the ball, so that's going to help you. Also, I like my two-way players, and I consider Embiid a two-way player because he can play defense, and he damn sure can score the ball, okay? 11.7 rebounds, 4.2 assists. He averaged a little over three turnovers per game, one steal, and 1.5 blocks. So, again, another MVP-type season from Joel Embiid. He produced, and he's going to do pretty much the same this year. And, again, I want to see if we can get him to the 70 mark in games. But if we can, if we can still keep it at that 68, whoever drafts him, know you're getting an MVP caliber player in fantasy basketball, and he's going to produce for your team. Coming in at number four, we have – the talented Jason Tatum. This is the season. This is the year in fantasy basketball when Jason Tatum is going to be a top five fantasy basketball player. He's going to put everything together. He had a slow start um, last season, but the whole Boston Celtics team had a slow start, hoping that everything that's going on does not hurt his game. And he's able to just get out there, play basketball, and just be a top five fantasy player for us because, again, he can do it all. Um, he played 76 games. He can score the hell out of the ball, and his field goal percentages have gone up, and he's starting to become more efficient, which is a plus because he can score anywhere on the court, and if you are efficient at doing so, you're going to end up averaging more points than, than what, you know, people who shoot, they throw up, what, 30 shots but only hit maybe – 10 or 11. He is starting to be more efficient, and that is a plus. Okay. 45.3% from the field, 35.3% from threes. I want to see if he can get that up to 37, 38 this season because that's just more points. I want to see um, Tatum average 30 points. He's capable of doing so. They have so much talent on Boston, so he doesn't really have to do it, but I would love to see him do it. And he can, again, if he can increase that. Um, three-point percentage, he will be able to do it. He shoots 85, 86% from the free throw line. He averaged eight rebounds, 4.4 assists, 2.9 turnovers. Uh, <laughs> I can't even tell. 2.9 turnovers and one steal. So, again, he's not only scoring, he's, he's rebounding the ball. He's going to get you a steal. So, he is playing some defense out there as well. And, again, this is the year where Tatum is going to take it to the next level and be a top five fantasy basketball player. Coming in at number three, we have the talented Luca. We are on a first name basis, so I'm calling him Luca. He is simply amazing. When I think of Luca, I think of positionless basketball. You just put Luca out there on the court, he's gonna do it all. When I think of Luca, I think of a triple double threat and not one of those triple doubles where it's 10, 10, 10. No, I'm talking about 30 points. 13 rebounds, maybe 14, 15 assists. He is capable of doing that. And what he also brings to the table is he is going to make everyone around him better, which benefits us from a fantasy standpoint, because again, that means assists, right? And we like our assists. So what did he do in 2021? He played 65 games. He averaged 28.4 points per game. He shot 45.7% from the field. 
35.3% from threes. I would like to see that go up a little bit more. And I also want to see those free throws go up. His free throw percentage is 74.4%. I would love to see him get that up to 80 as a guard. I just need that to, to increase, which will push him to 30 points per game. In my opinion, he averaged 9.1 rebounds and 8.7 assists, which is great. 4.5 turnovers. I want his turnovers to come down. All right. He's, he's, He's in that five range pretty much almost. Let's get that between three and four, preferably on the three side instead of the four side, and one still per game. So with Luca again, triple-double threat. Health is wealth, and that's one of the most important things. So I would love to see him get up to 70 to 75 games. But, you know, a lot of times things just happen. However, if you're drafting Luca, he, again, is a triple-double threat and he is capable of carrying his team, and he can carry your team most nights in fantasy basketball. Coming in at number two, the Greek freak. That's right, Giannis. That's right. One of the best players in the game today, forward slash center with the Bucks. This young man is just amazing, and every year he dominates in the NBA and from a fantasy standpoint, when you are drafting the Greek freak, you are drafting someone who has the potential to carry your team every game that you play every day, pretty much. He's going to carry your team in fantasy football, and he is capable of scoring enough points to cover a few players on your team in the event that someone does not produce. So, when you draft the Greek freak, your opponent is going to be concerned when they play you because they already know three of their players may add up to one game of the Greek freak's stats. So, again, if you draft the Greek freak, you're getting essentially the top or top two player in fantasy basketball and what did he do last season he did pretty much the same of what he's been doing every year a ball out he played 67 games averaged 29.9 points per game he shot 55.3 percent from the field 29 percent from threes which i would love to see if he can just really truly commit to improving his three-point field goal percentage and and 35 i am fine with but we got to get that up well over 30% because then he's really going to be over 30 points per game if he was able to to really work on that three-point percentage. He, he shot uh, 72% from the free throw line. I want to see that up too. If he can give me 75, that's a, a start and be a consistent 75%. Um, 11.6 rebounds, obviously. 5.8 assists, 3.3 turnovers, one steal, and 1.4 blocks. So with um, the Greek Freak, that's another player who I consider a two-way player because he's going to, to do it on both sides of the ball. He's going to block shots for you. He's going to rebound the ball, whether that's on the offensive side or the defensive side. And he's, again, going to block some shots, and he's going to get some steals, and then he's going to score the ball. Um, again, the only thing that I would love to see him improve is the um, the three point percentage and the free throw percentage because that may push him to my my number one player in fantasy. So if you don't get the top guy in fantasy, getting the Greek freak is just great. That's like, oh, okay, I'll take him because he is very efficient and he's going to have an impact on your team like no other. Coming in at number one, one of my faves, Nicola the Joker. That's right, Joker, y'all. Is there is is there any surprise here? No. He is simply amazing. And when I start singing, y'all already know what it is. He is right now the number one player in fantasy MVP in the NBA the last two seasons. And he had another impressive year. Jamal Murray wasn't around. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. wasn't there. So he carried the load and he carried it well. He played 74 games, which is just amazing for um, his high usage rate. Very durable and efficient, okay? 
averaged 27.1 points per game, shot 58.3% from the field, 33.7% from threes. I would love to see if we can get that to 35 or 37. That's going to push him over 30 points per game. He shot 81% from the free throw line, which is great. 13.8 rebounds, 7.9 assists, 3.8 turnovers. For his high usage usage rate, 3.8 turnovers isn't much in my opinion because think about it. He's a center, and he is initiating the offense. He's bringing the ball up the court, setting up everyone else on offense. That is just crazy to see. When you're seeing it, it's like, wow. And when he's doing it, he is actually executing, okay? You don't average 7.9 assists by accident, okay? So with Joker, you're getting a player who's going to score the ball. He's going to be efficient doing so, and then he's going to rebound the ball, and he's going to get you almost 13, 14 rebounds per game, and then maybe seven, eight assists. That's amazing. Now, I will say that Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. may be back this season, so you may see his assists slightly decrease, and maybe the rebounds come down slightly if Michael Porter Jr. is able to go and start getting back into the flow of things with the team. However, the the Joker is going to, to pretty much have another um, MVP caliber season because he's efficient. He's going to score the ball. We already know that. He is their guy, so they're always going to look to get him involved first. And then we also don't know how Jamal Murray is going to look. We didn't get to see him last year at all. And then we definitely don't know what Michael Porter Jr. is going to look like. So, again, it's going to be Joker's world. And if you can draft Joker with the number one pick, you have done a lot. You have set yourself up to have the season that you need to potentially get to the playoffs and potentially compete for a championship in fantasy basketball. Now, if you want to go the Greek freak first and somebody gets Joker too, hey, it's your world. It is up to you because both of these two guys are top two players and what they bring to the table is pretty much the same because they're both going to score the ball and be efficient doing so and they're both going to rebound the ball. But again, with Joker, the rebounds are slightly higher and he's going to assist the more assist the ball <laughs> Uh, slightly higher than the Greek Freak, and he's more efficient from the field. And so that will help you in a categories-based league. And then again, if you're on the board, just take Joker. Don't um, overthink it because he is right now the top player in fantasy. And if you get him, you're setting yourself up for long-term success for this season in fantasy basketball. Leave some comments and let me know your thoughts on my top 10 players make sure you hit the subscribe button and your notifications are turned on we have a lot of great content which will help you prepare for your upcoming fantasy football draft and help you throughout your fantasy basketball season y'all have a great week thanks for listening to the score fantasy basketball podcast be sure to subscribe to The Score for more fun and great advice on how to win at fantasy basketball. And if you've got comments or questions about The Score, send them to waverwirequeen at gmail.com. The Score.